We are here with another episode of K&E Theatre Group's Local Spotlight Series. Uh, a couple of things before we get into this awesome interview. Uh, if you are inclined, in the comment section below, there is a PayPal link uh, that will send you to our PayPal if you were uh, feeling like donating. Um, if you are on uh, IGTV or the U our YouTube channel, or you just want to donate later because you're on Facebook, um, you can always go to our website, which is KETG.org, click on Support KETG, and you'll find the Donate button there. Well, today is a first. Um, we have not had a stage manager slash lighting designer on the show, and I am very excited to get the inside scoop on all of that. I even wore my stage blacks for her, so I am ready. Uh, so I would like to introduce you all to Carly Delapena. Hi, Carly. Hi, Eddie. Oh my Thank gosh, you. I've missed your face. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you too. Thank you so much for doing this for us. I mean, thank you for having me here. I'm incredibly flattered considering I'm not an actor. This is really cool. You are a very large part of the theater community. <laughs> you, you have lit two, two now of the KETG shows and I couldn't have done it without you. So yeah, you're, <laughs> well, you. you're just a treasure. <laughs> uh, we're going to jump right in. Okay. All right, so the first thing, I always start and end the interviews the same way. Mm -hmm. um, so the first one is gonna be, what is your theatrical timeline? Let everybody know where you started, how you started, uh, and where you are now. And don't leave anything out in the middle because we're all interested. Oh, geez. <laughs> I mean, much like everyone else, you just fall into theater. No one wakes up and says, you know what? I really wanna you know, eat ramen every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> So for me, I guess it started in high school and the majority of my friends were actors and uh -huh. I never saw myself as a performer, but I really wanted to find a way to get involved backstage. And the musical that year was Seussical. I know everyone has a love-hate relationship with that musical, but for me, it's sentimental. <laughs> I love Seussical. <laughs> right? And the director was Deb Sally and she asked if I'd be interested in volunteering as a spotlight operator. Of course, I said yes. Of that course. meant I got to wear one of those fancy headsets. <laughs> so, you know, I was the coolest 14 year old ever and that was my peak. <laughs> I love that. But during the tech process, when everyone else was, you know, backstage and falling asleep and doing homework, I had the opportunity to actually hear the conversations between the director and the lighting designer and the sound designer. And I was mesmerized. Suddenly it wasn't just an excuse for me to hang out with my friends and do something cool after school but I got to learn something that I wasn't going to get in the classroom. So jump ahead to my sophomore year over at Westfield State and I was a communications major and I had to fulfill some kind of course requirement and I saw on the list that I could do intro to lighting design. Like, all right, you know, I like lighting in high school. Why not? I'll try this. And I have this very vivid memory of me just being in the workshop class and doing my thing and the professor came up to me during a break and said, you know, you're really good at this. And we're looking for someone to do the student produced show. Would you want to try lighting design? So after some convincing, I said yes. <laughs> and I was so scared that I was going to mess something up. <laughs> but it gave me the first chance to hang my first plot, do my first design, program my first show. And it was low stakes. And there wasn't, you know, a huge time crunch. It definitely wasn't perfect. I made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> But you learn from mistakes. Exactly. But it was mine. Exactly. Mm -hmm. For the first time in my life, I got to create something from begin to end, present it in front of an audience. And I don't know, the very next day I changed my major. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> That's incredible. Now, where did stage management come in? You know, it's so funny because I started doing lighting design and at some point, Along the way, I realized that I liked actors a lot more than I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I really wanted to be a part of the rehearsal process and see how they got to where they are. Because when I jump in doing lighting design, you've already choreographed everything. Everything is blocked, and I'm just seeing that first run through. So I said, you know, I have another year left in school. So my first and last show that I did was Spring Awakening. Okay. And I was a stage manager for that. Awesome. Yep. Now what? Now after that, did you jump right into like uh, community theaters to get some to get some uh, exposure? I did. 
Okay, and you have... worked with uh, who? I found the Opera House players completely by accident. I, you know, had some mutual friends who were doing some theater shows with them, and Munin at the time asked if I'd be interested in stage managing with them. And I had only done it at one point before that, you know, like I said, it was Spring Awakening, so I did their production of Working, and I was their stage manager. Wait, that was your first time stage managing? First time stage managing outside of college. What? I know. <laughs> that was like a couple years ago. Yeah, you ask me what my theatrical timeline is, and we're talking about a space that's like this big. <laughs> oh my gosh, I had no idea. Wow. Now, I know that you got to do something really cool last summer with the Brevard Music Center. I did. Uh, can you tell us about that and also tell us about, like, spiders? <laughs> you sure you want to hear about the spiders? <laughs> I want to hear about the spiders. <laughs> so, I found that just like everything else that I've done so far, I've just been thrown into the fire and I'm either gonna sink or swim. And it was a friend that I made at an internship that I did out in New York State. And it was, um... all right, we have to add my thinking out. <laughs> Bristol Valley Theater in Naples, oh. New York. Oh, wow. And I made a friend named Theron and you know we had corresponded back and forth for a couple of years. And then out of nowhere, he emails me and says, what are you doing this summer? And my initial response is, I don't know, you tell me what I'm doing this summer. <laughs> <laughs> so they were in desperate need of a stage manager. So I jumped right on board. And the very next month, I drove out to the middle of nowhere, North Carolina, at the Brevard Music Center for their massive orchestra festival. Wow. It was unlike anything I'd ever experienced before in my entire life. Over the span of three months, we did 100 performances. Oh my gosh. And what did you do for them? Like you were stage manager, but did you do any lighting design or learn anything about lighting design while you were there? I didn't have the opportunity to do lighting design, but I had my hand in pretty much everything else. I was a house manager. I was an electrician. I was a sound technician. I was anything that they needed. They just so threw me in. You definitely got to just learn everything while you were there. Get, your put, get to put your fingers in all the different pies. Exactly. <laughs> Awesome. Now tell me about the spy. I know you mentioned spiders to me earlier. So tell me about the spiders. You know, I got to work with all these really cool people like, you know, David Sanborn and the Temptations. But then I got to work alongside all of these spiders and giant bugs. And I felt like I was in the middle of Australia, the size of these things. I'm not even kidding you, Eddie, when I say the spiders were probably like this big. Oh, but no. Their bodies were this big, but then with the legs. Oh, I hate spiders. <laughs> I hate them so much. <laughs> No, 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 no. I would have, when I worked at Hoopty Doo, our porch was covered in spiders and I just, I, I had to be like, listen, this has to be cleaned, please. I hate them. <laughs> hate nature. So you know, that was the one thing that I got to pick up was, you know, learning how to kill these giant spiders, which were probably barking at me the size of them. Oh God. <laughs> and I made friends with the maintenance man there and he ended up giving me this like wasp hornet spray. Uh-huh. So I could kill these spiders from probably two stories away uh -uh. because I did not have the guts to go kill them myself. Nope. <laughs> not for me. Nope. I would have been nope. right back in Massachusetts. <laughs> no. All right. So now we talked about how you started stage. You did some stage management in college and you started stage managing for the Opera House Players production of Working. Uh, so tell us, can you explain to us what a typical day as a stage manager is? When you wake up, to the time you go to bed, what does a stage manager do? You know, depending on what kind of production you're working on, it's so vastly different from the last. Like if I'm doing um, orchestra stage management, it's you know me setting up chairs and making sure the stage is ready. But let's say that I'm working on musical. Okay. If actor call is starting at seven, my day is probably starting by at least minimum five. And I'll get up check my email, make sure that, you know, I'm on top of any questions that need answered. And then I will get my butt to the stage, probably sit in my car and cry for a while. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've been there. Right. <laughs> um, I'll go into the assumption that I don't have an assistant stage manager. So then I'm sweeping and mopping the stage and I'm setting it for whatever we're going to be working on that day. And if at that point we've already gone through the tech process, then I'm also responsible for testing the lighting and sound equipment and reporting any problems with the technicians. Because as stage manager, my duty is to be the central hub of communication. 
and not every technician and designer can be there all the time, but I am. So I'm just, you know, relaying everything that we've done that day and anything that we plan to do the next day. Okay. So, then, so now let's say like call starts, like actors start showing up and being like, where's my coffee? <laughs> where's my dressing room? <laughs> so what happens, let's say at half hour? Yep. So at half hour, everyone arrives and whether you're ready for them or not, you're going to be bombarded with questions. Of course. <laughs> and finally I get to sit down, but then my face goes into the book and I am following along in the script and tracking every single moment of the show. Actors' movements on stage, costumes, props, lighting, sound elements, projections. In short, my job is to become the manual of the show. So it can yeah. be recreated every night and maintain the artistic vision of you know, the director and the fellow designers. Because God forbid I get hit by a bus. <laughs> we need someone Please else go. to be able to... I know, knock on wood. <laughs> That's not how I'm gonna go. <laughs> no. So now the show, let's say the show goes off without a hitch. Which is which rarely happens. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, what happens after the actors go home? After the actors go home, I unfortunately don't get to follow them out right to my car. <laughs> I'll probably hang around the theater for at least another hour or so, and I will you know, report anything that's happened that evening and reset for the very next day. I will send out the rehearsal report to the designers, I will send out the rehearsal reminder to the actors, clean up any props or costume pieces, actors I'm looking at you, <laughs> and I'll, right? I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> and lock up the building and start it all again the next very next day. Nice. Now, we know that you stage manage, mm -hmm. but I, I know personally uh, you are a fantastic lighting designer. <laughs> um, so explain to me, if, if you are asked to, to do a musical, let's say a musical, um, what is your process like as far as uh, getting a blank piece of paper and a musical to getting the entire show on its feet, setting the mood, environment, uh, and emotion through color and light? I've seen this great Venn diagram circling around online mm -hmm. and I think that it perfectly depicts the design process, you know, lighting designer, set designer, costume designer, but it's three circles, good, fast, and cheap. Yep. There's a gray area in the middle of all three. That does not exist. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> I wish it did. <laughs> not but, without a $14 million budget. <laughs> right. <laughs> and even then, probably not going to be fast. True. <laughs> but the question I have to ask myself is, as a designer, is what can I create that will get me as close to that gray mythical area as I can. <laughs> so, so do you go yeah. now do you go and sit down with a director and talk to him or her about uh, you know emotion and environment and dramatic mood as far as lighting goes? Yeah absolutely because I can do the read-through of the script on my own but my interpretation of what the story is telling might be completely different from what the director wants to portray on stage. Okay. So I need to make sure that both, you know, them and I are on the same page of what message we want to give to the audience. Interesting. Sorry. I like that. I mean, you and I have sat down uh, <laughs> for Songs for a New World and right. Assassins, and we've talked about, um, we've talked about, especially with Songs for a New World, I mean, you know, you created seasons for us. Fall was beautiful. I loved screaming, please do that again, please. That was it, stop, stop. <laughs> um, yeah, and you're just so thorough and creative with your color mixing. Uh, and you, for some reason, you just get what's in my head, which is crazy, because not many people do. <laughs> um, and somehow you get what's going on in my head. And yeah, I don't know what's going on in there, so. <laughs> yeah, me, like, we're just there. I love it. I love working with you. Um, so tell me, what have you done to stay creative during the pandemic? So... I've been lucky enough to still be able to collaborate with Majestic Theater, despite everything that's going on. So over the pandemic, we have developed this great program called Behind the Curtain. And there's two versions of that, one being Behind the Curtain with Danny, and he's doing all these great interviews with um, frequent actors and maybe you know, some popular names throughout Western Mass. 
But the other side of that is behind the curtain with children's theater. And what we're doing with that is it's a live talk back with a previous cast of children's theater. So they are being able to watch an old production that they did and then reflect on it. That's so seeing awesome. themselves older, you know, years later, performing as a child. And, and how, do, how does someone get to watch this? What is the, uh, the link uh, um, for the website? So you can either find us over at our YouTube page, which is Majestic Theater, or if you go to majestictheater.com, you can go to, um, I think we have three little boxes set up. You can either follow us over at Behind the Curtain for Danny's interviews, which are every Thursday at seven, and then the Children's Theater Talkbacks, which are every Sunday at seven. That's fantastic. I love that. Now, you've been working at the Majestic for three years. Is that correct? That's correct. Hard to believe. Three, three years. Yep. And you're also working at HCC. So that's Holyoke Community College. Um, so can you tell us what your duties at the Majestic and HCC are? Now, <laughs> we know you as stage manager, lighting designer extraordinaire, but you have other things that you've been thrown. So what are those things? It's hard for me to really say what I haven't done the Majestic at this point. <laughs> <It's> sort of... <laughs> you've acted too. I acted. I never thought that was ever going to happen. Whoops. The pitch. You were on. You were on uh, on stage with lines in the pitch, <laughs> which don't forget, everyone is coming back to the majestic uh, in January. If you want to see me deliver those whole three lines, <laughs> she'll be there. So tell us what else you're doing at the majestic and and what you do at HCC. Yeah. So when I started the Majestic three years ago, I was just an overhire carpenter for the strike of Johnny Guitar. And then from there, it's been a constant cycle of, oh, we really need someone to do this thing. Let's have Carly do it. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so I've been helping out as an electrician and working alongside Dan Riss with his lighting designs. Uh, Greg, you've seen all of his beautiful work over the Majestic. He is mm -hmm. training me to be a carpenter. And most recently, like you said, I've been working backstage at the pitch. And then they put me on stage for that with this, you know, stellar neon yellow costume. <laughs> Bright yellow. Right. You can't miss me. <laughs> but you looked great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but and what about HCC? Over at HCC, I started there in October. So it hasn't even been a year yet. Still very fresh over there. But I am the assistant technical director. That's amazing. Yep. So I I'm am... so happy for you. I'm so, it's crazy. You know, since I got back from this summer from Brevard, everything has just been falling into place. Well, you deserve it. So, thank you. Thank you. So, I, I'm yeah. myself and everyone who's ever worked with you has nothing but amazing things to say. Um, so, it's so nice to see good things happening to such good people. Thank you. Um, so, what's the best advice you've been given about the business? I guess two things come to mind when I hear this question. And the first is take every opportunity that you have to help the rest of your team. You know, even if your call, like, you know, me as an electrician, if we're done by 10 PM, which never happens by the way, but let's just say no. in the miracle world, we're done by 10. <laughs> Go volunteer your help with the carpenters. I guarantee they're not done because not are you, you know, establishing your relationship with that theater and showing everyone that you're a team player, but I guess this leads into the second thing is you're learning something new. As a technician, you want to be the most well-rounded person that you can because lighting is never just lighting. Like I said, I'm working in collaboration with the set designer and I want to know what they're doing. And if I'm able to help him, you know, maybe he can, you know, help me later on. And I'm, I'm constantly adding things into my experience tool belt because I never want to go into a situation completely blind. So let's say I'm really struggling backstage doing a quick change. I can you know, dig around in my tool belt and say, this problem that I'm having right now isn't exactly like this thing that I did in the past, but it's similar. So what did I learn back then that I can utilize now? And that's something that's definitely, I feel like uh, everybody in theater should heed yes. that advice. Yes. You should, if you're an actor, know about lighting, know yes. about sound design, yes. direction, choreography, carpentry. Um, like you said, you never know when it's going to come in handy ever. I never thought I would be like helping create lighting, uh, lighting designs and directing. I never knew that. I was always a performer. So I totally get that. I, I think that's a great piece of advice that everyone should definitely carry with yeah. them. Learn it all. 
And this world yeah. is a lot smaller than you think. You know, even when I was working out in North Carolina, I met two people that I worked with four years ago in the middle of nowhere, New York. What? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, uh, one quick question, and then we're going to close out with my normal question. Sure. Really quickly, what is your favorite project and why? My gut says Beetlejuice, but we've already talked about that show enough on here. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but I My favorite project. So something you have done personally that you are just so proud of and why. All right. I guess. I'm not even just saying this because we're, you know, in a Caney interview, but probably Songs for a New World. Aw. That was our first time working together. I know. <laughs> um, so what made that so special for you? It made it so special for me because like everything else that I've done, <clears throat> I'm thrown to the fire or, you know, I'm thrown to the deep end of the pool and I'm either going to sink or swim. And this show was not any different. No. <laughs> um, you know, we have a mutual friend, Becca Kulong, and yes. she gave you my contact information for a lighting designer. And what I didn't realize that I was signing up for was not only a um a company that had lights that I had never seen before or worked with before, but none of the equipment that you had I had ever touched before. <laughs> 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 Which was fine because again, it was a learning experience for me and now I know for you know, all of your future shows. For the, just so everyone understands, we lit the show in six hours before our final dress rehearsal. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> that was, it was, a, that it was, was crazy. It came out beautiful though. It was beautiful. And that's why um, it's my favorite project because we went through hell and back, but I've never been more proud of something that I've done in such a short amount of time, blood, sweat, and tears, literally brought a blanket and pillow to sleep under the risers because I knew it wasn't going home. I mean, we were there till like what, 4 a.m. one day? I think so. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that was a, that was a, 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 that was a test for us. Right. We, we survived. Uh, and we will move forward. <laughs> and I'm so excited. Carly is going to be joining us next season. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, she's like my right hand gal. Uh, so the last question is a question I ask everybody at the end of every interview. What draws you specifically to live theater, to live performance? I'm going to have to echo what a lot of other people have said in this program. And it's the community. Because you and I both know that it takes a special brand of crazy to do theater. <laughs> That's the truth. That is the truth. And I love that. Because every production that I get to work on, I'm surrounded by these diverse and talented artists and everyone in that room shares the same passion and dedication for their work that I do. That's so incredibly rare to find in any other field. But in addition to them being my coworkers, we're also a family. And this is such a small, tight-knit community like I know that if my car was broken down and I posted on some theater you know thing online that I needed a ride there would be a fleet around the block it would be a parade. To help me out <laughs> it would be a parade with doors open exactly absolutely <laughs> Carly you are just so wonderful and you're so talented and knowledgeable about the the, the stuff that you love and I am so happy and honored to have you as part of the k &E Theater Group family. And I've enjoyed this interview tremendously. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Eddie, for being here. And I can't wait to see your face in person. I can't wait to give you a big hug. <laughs> Bye. Bye, thank you. <laughs> oh, she is awesome. She is so lovely. Thank you guys so much for once again joining us for the KETG Local Spotlight Series. Uh, one more time, really quickly, uh, if you are inclined um, to send a donation our way to help us uh, with the rights for our 2021 season, our supersize season, it's going to be huge. Uh, there is a PayPal link in the comment section on Facebook. If you're not on Facebook, you're on IGTV or your, our YouTube channel, or you're on Facebook and like I said earlier, just want to you know, support us later on. Um, you can always go to our website, KETG.org, click on support KETG, and there's a donation bucket button there. Uh, you can also sign up for our newsletter. Our new season should be getting posted shortly. Um, we're just waiting on a couple of rights things. Our cabaret cast 
will be announced soon. I'm really excited about that as well. So thank you so much for joining us one more time. We'll see you next time on Local Spotlight Series.